Hello and welcome to Church at Home with Rachel. This is take two for Wednesday because <laughs> right in the middle of, of recording the first time, my husband called and I made the mistake of answering the phone. Not that answering the phone for my husband is a mistake, but it's usually not an emergency and I don't know how to edit. So I'm going to start this again. Uh, it fills right in with the topic. The topic today is patience. <laughs> um, yesterday, when I was doing my daily office, I was reading my from um, Soul Fuel by Bear Grylls, and the topic for the day was called Patience, Child Patience. And I'd like to share this with you. He says, the internet, baggage claim, the big break you spent years hoping for. When things go slower than we want them to, waiting is hard. But if you're waiting for God to bring his plans into fruition, you're not alone. Abraham waited 25 years for God to fulfill his promise that he would become a father. Joseph waited 13 years before his dream came true and he stood before Pharaoh. Moses waited 40 years in the wilderness and Jesus waited 30 years before he went public. If God is making you wait, you're in good company. This is from Romans chapter 8 verse 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. God is always at work on your behalf, but we don't always get to see what he's doing. So we can trust, yet we can trust him every step of the way. Like a child, patient, trusting, always faithful. When we are faithful in the little things, we are trusted with even more. I, some of you know, am not the most patient person in the world. Um, I have, I, 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 I can have great patience with other people, tend to not have so much with myself. And this week in particular, I am very frustrated with myself because of, I have Thursday and Friday, I am in Edmonton for an ordination, two ordinations, and then some rural ministries work. And the following week, I have to go back to Edmonton for my first performance evaluation review in 24 years of ministry. <laughs> kind of nervous about that. Um, but it just means that everything that has to get done, especially getting caught up after my holidays, all gets clumped into just a couple of days. Yesterday, today, and a little bit next week. And it's kind of overwhelming. And so I get impatient with myself for not planning properly or for, you know, you know sort of fiddling around and not getting stuff, getting focused and things like that. And when I get impatient with myself, guess what happens? Whatever it is I'm impatient about just gets worse. It's like a never ending. It's like a snowball. It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it's absolutely useless, an avalanche of impatience. So reading that yesterday was a reminder to me to slow down and to remember that everything will get done in its time. And if it doesn't get time, what's the worst that's going to happen? The world is not going to open up and sink, like drag me down into the bowels of hell. If I may have to apologize. I may have to work late into the evening. You know, I might have to forbear. My husband's wrath is I don't watch football with him because I'm working on a sermon. Yeah, that might be a better idea anyway. But the idea is that patience is something that is a good thing. And it's like that snowball of impatience. A snowball of patience can do the same thing. The more patience that I live and exercise, the bigger it gets, the easier it is. And it helps me to remember that I am not here for my sake. I am here for God's sake, for the sake of the people I serve, for the people around me that I love and that, who care for me. That my presence in their life is needs to be about serving other people and, and being aware of things. And the flip side of that is when I can do that well and I can act with patience, then I receive that too. I receive that too. I don't know about you, but there are times in my life, many times in my life, when I have been impatient with my life. Like he talks about, you know, Moses waiting that many years to see Pharaoh and Jesus waiting 30 years to go public and, and um, Moses waiting 40 years, wandering 40 years in the wilderness. There are Abraham waiting 25 years to become a father. There are times in my life when I have known that something was coming and I was impatient for it, impatient for graduation, impatient for ordination, impatient for holidays, things like that. And that is, that can be, that's, that's an, in, I think my impatience was an act of, of um, in some ways, a sin. These are things that I knew were happening, that were coming, and I needed to trust God that they would happen in there in due time. 
that's one kind of, impa- of of recognition of patience. Then there's another kind of patience, I think, and that's the waiting for something that we don't know what it is. I don't know about you, but there have been times in my life, probably all of my life at any given time, there has been something that I thought, I don't know what God is calling me to do next. I don't know what's happening or what this is all about, but I think I have a hunch that something is going to happen. Abraham was told, you know, you're going to be a father. He waited 25 years. Moses was told to wander in the wilderness. And I I can't remember off the top of my head if he was told it would be 40 years or if it just turned into 40 years. I'm thinking that was just that way. He was, he went out in obedience to do what God called him to do, even though it didn't look like there was an, an end in sight. He knew what the end would be, the land of milk and honey, but he didn't know whether he would get there. And as a matter of fact, Moses did not get there. But he still had, for the most part, the patience to say to God each day, lead me. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm willing to be patient and follow you, your voice, follow your will, and lead me where we need to go today. And I think that's a really important thing, especially for me, to recognize that in my life, I know there are certain things, you know, I'm excited about this ordination on Thursday. I love ordinations, the celebration of new of people taking on the mantle that God has given them for a new calling. Same thing with baptisms and confirmations and weddings and things like that. Even funerals, there's a sense that this is the beginning of a new thing. And I love that. But there's also the impatience or the, or the need for patience that comes when we have a hunch that something is happening, that all these things that we've been working on, looking back, they all look like they're pointing towards something, but we don't know what that might be. And for that, we need patience. The truth is, we may never know for sure what it was that God was calling us to do, because that thing that we're working toward may not be for us. It may be that all of those pieces that we see falling into place, all the experiences that we've had, are not necessarily for us to celebrate, for us to take on a new challenge, for us to be able to say, yay, I did it. Look what did God help me do. But for us to help put those pieces that we've, those experiences and that learning we've had to someone else's life, that we can help uplift someone else and help them in their dream or something that they have done. The fact is we don't know what that might be because it's in the future, but God knows. But what we do know is we need to have patience in that. But we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. If we have patience and trust that even when it doesn't make a lot of sense, What we're doing today, what we've done in the past, what we're called to do in the future, will come together like a beautiful puzzle or a tapestry. And it will be glorious in God's vision, in God's God's eyes. And we will have the, the pleasure of knowing that we contributed to that because we both had patience and we were obedient to God's call. So whatever you have going on today, I pray that you will have the patience to just put yourself into it in the moment you're in. Focus on one thing. Don't multitask. Think about what it is you're doing right now and do it completely. And when that's done, move on to the next thing and appreciate the gift you have to pay attention, to be patient, and to do what you're called to do. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. And I will see you again tomorrow for Church at Home with Rachel.